Hello everybody, welcome back to Learning at Home with Mrs. V. All right, so we're gonna be getting into fractions. One of my favorite topics in math. Why? Because you can eat fractions. All right, so this Thanksgiving, did you have grandma's pumpkin pie? Well, let me tell you, it's not a big secret how to make pumpkin pie. And I see this can of pumpkin on the back. There's a recipe, and I copied this recipe onto this orange piece of paper. So in order to make pumpkin pie, you have to know and understand how to read fractions. So let's take a look at this recipe. So we've got one can of pureed pumpkin, which I have right here, one and a half cups of evaporated milk. Now, if you take a look at that, you've got a whole number and a fraction. That's called a mixed number. One and a half cups. All right three quarters cup of granulated sugar. Now I call this quarters, but you can also read it three fourths. One half teaspoon of salt, one teaspoon of ground cinnamon, half a teaspoon of ground ginger, one fourth of a teaspoon of ground cloves, two large eggs, and one unbaked nine inch pie shell. So that's all of the stuff that you need in order to make grandma's pumpkin pie, all right? So, how many of you had pumpkin pie for Thanksgiving? I know I did, although I fixed it so it wasn't grandma's. But it is absolutely delicious with a, with a dollop of whipped cream. But I have to understand fractions in order to make the pumpkin pie. So see, fractions are practical and you'll use them all the time and you kind of see them everywhere, all right? So fractions, that's what we're gonna be getting into now. So let me take grandma's pumpkin pie recipe off of here and let's talk fractions and let's talk a little bit about the vocabulary because we can't do anything with fractions if we don't understand what they are. So fractions, we have a numerator and a denominator and notice I have my line here which actually means divided by. So this is actually a division problem. So when you're writing a fraction, you're also writing a division problem. All right, so the numerator. The numerator is the top number that tells how many parts are taken or used. So when you think about grandma's pumpkin pie, and I can draw grandma's pumpkin pie here, and normally pumpkin pies are found in eight pieces. We don't wanna make them too small because we want to enjoy as much of the pumpkin pie as we can get our hands on. All right, so if there are eight pieces here and we have um, two people go into the kitchen and take a piece of pie, and we've got one, two pieces of pie taken, all right? We had two pieces that were taken. So two would be our numerator, the number of pieces taken. Now, our denominator would be the number down below that tells the total equal parts. So when I take a look at this pie, I've got eight parts. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So my eight would be my denominator, all right? So the top number is my numerator, the number of parts taken or used, and then the denominator is the bottom number, and that's how many there are in all of grandma's pumpkin pie. All right, so that's the difference. Now I said denominator is the number down below. That's what my third grade teacher taught me, and so I remember denominator down below, and then the numerator is up above, okay? All right, so now we know what a numerator and denominator are. So let's move on to our next vocabulary word. Okay, so we've got pro proper fractions. Well, proper fractions are when the numerator is less than the denominator. So here, my numerator is less than my denominator. So that's what makes it a proper fraction. And that means that the value is less than one. It's less than the whole pie. The whole pie has not been eaten. Only two eighths of the pie have been eaten. That's what makes it a proper fraction. All right, now, we also have equivalent fractions. Equivalent fractions, it's just a fancy way of saying fractions equal in size. So I've got this pie 
that someone decided to cut into eight pieces. Now, if we had somebody who really wanted large pieces of pie, we could take a pie and instead, right, the pies are the same size, approximately. And if we wanted that, well, then that wavy piece of pie, there we go. All right, so if we had this pie cut in fourths instead, so there are only four pieces that could be taken, and say someone comes in and they take one piece of this pie. Now, take a look at the amount of pie taken here. Take a look at the amount of pie taken here. The numerator here would be one. The denominator, the number of pieces, would be four. But if you take a look, this is the same amount of pie. Two people ate this, one person ate this. Somebody was really hungry for the pumpkin pie. So these two fractions are equivalent, which means they have the, they have the same amount that has been taken out of that pie. So those are equivalent fractions. So that's the definition of equivalent fractions. Fractions equal in size. All right, so let's make some connections to things that we already have learned about. Well, we could take um, the connection of money, all right? So we've talked about quarters, and we talked about that when we talked about decimals. And so um, we've got quarters. One quarter is equal to one-fourth of a dollar, okay? So it takes four quarters to equal one dollar. Um, I thought I had quarters in my pocket, so I don't. I was going to show a visual, but they've eluded me. All right, so 50 cents. 50 cents, it takes two of those to equal um, two quarters in order to equal a dollar. So two quarters or half of a dollar. So two-fourths, one-half, those are equivalent fractions. They are both part of a whole, part of the dollar the same part as 50 cents. All right, so if you have 75 cents, you have three quarters or three fourths of a dollar. So 50 cents would be equal to half of a dollar, whereas 75 cents would be three fourths of a dollar. All right, so let's make that connection to decimals. So with decimals, again, the definition of a decimal is similar. It's the same thing as the definition of a fraction. Both of them are part of a dollar. And you could actually take every decimal and make it into a fraction, or a fraction and make it into a decimal. And they would be equivalent too. So decimals are part of a whole. So when we have 25 hundredths, we can write that, take a look at that. That look, kind of looks like 25 cents, right? Well, that's also equal to one-fourth of a whole. Fifty hundredths is the same as one-half of a whole, or two-quarters of a whole, or two-fourths. Seventy-five hundredths is the same as three-fourths of a whole. So decimals, that's what we just finished studying. And so decimals and fractions are really related because they're both part of a whole. All right, so let's take a look at grandma's pumpkin pie again. And let's take a look at how many fractions we can find in this recipe. So when we take a look at this, we've got, here we've got a proper fraction because the numerator is smaller than the denominator. We've got another proper fraction here, half a teaspoon, another half a teaspoon, then one fourth of a teaspoon. So look and see how many, we've got one, two, three, four proper fractions just in this recipe. And then this one, I haven't, we haven't even gotten into yet. This right here is called a mixed number because it's mixed between a whole number and a fractional part. So we've got a whole and then a fraction that goes along with that. All right, so 
we're going to start talking about fractions. We're going to learn a lot more. And you'll notice that there is a, an attachment to this video. And I want you to refer back to the things that I've talked about in order for you to better understand the vocabulary behind fractions. All right? So we're going to keep learning about fractions. And take note, are you eating fractions? All right. I want you to keep watching, keep thinking, always stay curious, and I'll see you next time.